What's going on everyone? This is Ketchup here and today's video is to talk about my favorite team in Mortal Kombat 1, Rain and Sector. Some of you that have watched me for a while know that I actually started with this team, but since Rain got buffed, there is so much more to this team than there ever was before. And that's kind of the point of the video, is to talk about the new applications of a really fun team and the fact that, I'm not gonna lie, I just really missed playing Sector. And the fact that Rain works so well with Sector, with Rain being my current favorite character in the game at the moment, it's a really nice treat that the two work so well. The team was okay when it first came out. I mean, it was all right, but there were other cameos that you could definitely get more results with from just a utility standpoint. But because of the changes that Rain received to his back three, his dash cancels, the forward one that he now has, and the fact that other changes happened along the way, like when Rain God, when that projectile leaves now and Rain gets hit, it doesn't disappear anymore, it stays. All of these things have actually helped the team quite substantially. Truth be told, I've tried a few attempts to get this video today and I haven't really known how to put it together, so now I'm going to try and just sort of lay it all out one at a time, try and keep it short and sweet for each section, but there's a lot of tech, and hopefully you stay with me, and look, if you like playing Rain and you like Sector, I want to try and convince you to give it a go, because it's really fun and it's really powerful. So to start with, I want to talk about what you were doing first with the team and how it was simple, yet I want to then go into all the different stuff that's now possible, just to show how different the team is now the changes have happened to Rain. The first thing you were doing was a bit of zoning. Missile into Rain God. You could kind of create this obstacle course that was pretty good, but the substantial cooldown of missile made it only good for a few seconds. And then you have to wait for ages for the missile to come back. But for what it did, it was kind of all right. You could do your Rain Guards, you could go for a couple of them, daisy chain these projectiles, work it with your Whirlpool, work it around with the bubble, and it was okay. It wasn't great because it had a long cooldown, but it was decent. The next thing and the bigger thing was that you were just getting a little bit more damage. You'd go for these one bar confirms and they'd give you kind of 390 on average, which was decent damage at the time until other cameos would exist that would do more stuff for him. Uh, but Sector worked quite well for just extending damage. You'd go for an EX launch, call in the missile, go for like a re-jump almost, and turn this into some sort of decent damage that you can then zone with, their full screen. That was okay as well. You could somewhat do like long strings into an up missile. That's not fully real because there were gaps and there still are gaps all over range pressure. Uh, but the missile kind of extended some of that if they didn't armor. That was especially good in the corner, but that was kind of it. And outside of that, certain confirms like 2-1-1 into uppercut meant that you could launch without having to spend down back 1 EX. It did less damage, but it wasn't costing you anything besides the cameo gauge. You could do the same thing from 2-1-1 and... Across the board, that was kind of original Sector and Rain. It was fun, it was the team I got my very first Elder God, uh, Elder God climb with, but I swiftly moved on to other characters because I just wanted to do a little bit more. It's now I've revisited the team that I can't emphasize enough, there's so much more to it and it's really fun. So, I wanna go after the moves one at a time and then put everything together to give you a general game plan. Because I've practiced this team against some really good players and getting some really good results thanks to the new stuff. So, first of all, let's talk about Teleport Uppercut. The uppercut is so simple, it launches, it knocks them into the air, you can go for some kind of combo. This helps Rain a lot, and I want to talk about why with the changes. The new changes to Rain was his back three, which he's been given, which is back three, four. I've already made a video talking about Rain and Cyrax, so you already know the idea here. But Sector puts it to a slightly different use because of the teleport utility. The changes that Rain received meant that if you can go for certain combos, you can do various links and various confirms that didn't exist before. It looks really stylish, right? It is cool. It's decent damage. It's getting 360 meterless. Pretty cameo efficient, but the big thing is, and this is what I want to emphasize to anyone learning Sector, do not think he is just an up missile machine. That is not what Sector is. Sector has so much more, and if you're spending the whole game doing just missile, I'm going to zoom in here actually. Look at the top left of the screen. I've zoomed in now. I'm going to use missile. 
Look at how long this cooldown is. There's a substantial four or five second delay before it even starts coming back. So if you spend the round doing nothing but missile, this cooldown is going to be absolutely brutal. And the long cooldown also means that until it reaches the beginning, if you want to go for a flame burner or you want to go for a teleport or something, you still have to deal with this cooldown and it just hurts you for the rest of the round. Now, Rain, the first thing I tried was these kind of missile confirms that are really good at what they do. You know, it's decent damage, it's good setup. You can do something like charge your back forward one, dash in, go for a mid-screen, kind of hard to blockable. That's all good and does actually have a place if the setup's what you're after. But if it's damage you're after and you're looking to hit confirm into combos, the missile is actually a worse move to go for and that is where I want to talk about uppercut now. Uppercut allows you to jump in, get some sort of damage, it's pretty good for what it is, but it's when you start to compare it and add it to the other moves that it becomes pretty efficient. The first combo I was doing, and this one's really easy, is cancel into back three teleport, one four two, back three ender, 313 damage, meatlessly, and it's cameo efficient, because the flame burner and teleport have a much faster cooldown than the up missile. A combo that I want to show you now, that is much harder to perform, back three, back three rain god, now you teleport, end it, which I didn't do because I'm so good at video games. 366 meterlessly, and half of our cameo gauge has already regenerated. This does even more damage from back uh, forward two. Give me a minute. Oh, come on, Ryan. Three hundred and seventy-eight meterless, and the cameo regeneration is just as efficient. The reason I'm trying to emphasize mid-screen, the importance of using teleport instead of things like up missile combos or whatever, is that it's so much more cameo efficient, but the big one is that you can use teleport reactively. And that's the big one, is that you can see it land, go into teleport in the middle of your combo, get more damage than the missile combos were giving you, and you're not wasting anything. If you're using the missiles, this cooldown is just so much longer that if you want to go for these kind of combos and these confirms, I mean, it works. It's not terrible, but the cooldown is so much longer, it does less damage, and you're having to kind of early use a missile. If you want to get this off back three, you have to missile first and then go for your back three. So you're not, outside of a punish, you're not really using that for anything. You're, you risk wasting it getting interrupted, getting armored, getting whatever. Using a teleport instead means that no matter the situation, the teleport's only coming out because you're hit confirming into higher damage. And if you're doing the harder path, which is back three rain god, which is difficult, I have to say, this is actually your highest meterless damage. And that is not far off from your one bar confirms either, even with the meter extension. So using teleport mid screen to extend is very important. It's not just that though, you can get more damage using a forward two teleport after an overhead and get the same situation. 331 isn't terrible. It's less damage than confirming into EX down back one, but if you don't want to spend meter, it's there. And importantly, and this is a big one, should you land Rain God, the buffed Rain God from a few patches ago where they go straight up into the air rather than falling backwards, at close range, certain cameos can let you jump in like that, you know, and get a full combo. Janet can extend this into her loops. Some other cameos like have square waves might be able to do the same thing. Sector from any range will allow you to combo because when you land back three four Some cameos can let you extend from that Sector and the teleport punch means that you can dash in back three teleport and turn it into a full combo That is really important because if you're using it at a distance and it lands and they're not in the air Teleport punch when you time it correctly Does actually turn it into a full combo now the timing can be a bit weird you got to get them quite high up. 
But when you land it, you're getting way more damage than quite a lot of other cameos are going to provide for you. And it all comes down to teleport launch. Good cameo recharge rate, decent damage, higher damage than confirming into missile combos. It's all there and it all helps you so much more that when you get the timing down for this, you don't really need anything else. And this is the first thing I wanted to emphasize. The teleport combos with Rain are really strong because they're not far off some of the damage you get from his more ca like powerful cameos. And the cameo regeneration speed works well because when it's back, you can do missiles and you can do flame burner. Speaking of which, let's talk about flame burner. Okay, so Flame Burner is super simple in its application. It's plus on hit, plus 19, it's a restand, and it can create really good situations for Rain in particular. Rain in the corner is an absolute menace now because you've got the threat of the fake overhead into grab, you have the overhead on its own, which can hit them. You can go for your cancels, which they're not really plus, but you're not unsafe either, so it creates this really scary mind game of like, backdash into catching a button, into like hitting it, and then hit confirming it into a combo, landing a knockdown, and then you kind of continue that pressure again. Rain in the corner has a lot of different options, but the flame burner increases those options. The first thing is that should you land a combo, flame burner to end it, creates that scary situation of the fake overhead, the overhead on its own, the dash cancels, it forces that situation. And that will work off, of course, any launch. You can do two standing ones, you, know, you can go 1-1, one, one. if you want to keep it simple, standing one will never fail. 1-1 one, one is a higher chance to drop, but it's of course more damage. The flame burner can create that situation, and that's the first layer, is that you can go for overhead, you can go for fake overhead. If they want to try and mash, of course you have your forward two, which you can just hit confirm into much higher damage. And don't worry, we will cover these combos in a minute, because the damage is, as you can see, kind of good. All of these situations are created by Flame Burner, but this is not the only application. Back three, on its own, one of the weaknesses back three has, and I will just simulate this by having the opponent jump, just jumping in the air, right? If you do back three right as they've jumped, they get knocked on the floor. Now, it's not the end of the world because you can kind of put yourself back in a situation, but they can wake up attack from this. They have the threat of armor. They can delay their wake up. They can do various things. So back three getting jumped out of is somewhat of a way that the opponent can escape this situation. If you mix in Flame Burner to your pressure and they get hit, they get brought right back down and the pressure continues. So that is one element of Flame Burner that, in my experience against great players, is super strong because it forces them straight back to the ground and it forces them back into your mix-up. This is great for so many different reasons because that will work anywhere on screen. If they jump and you Flame Burner, they're getting brought back down to the ground and it creates a situation. It's especially dangerous in the corner because they are forced into the mix-up situation. Mid-screen, it just eliminates their wake-up and it kind of puts you back at roughly back three range. So it's still really dangerous. This is only one part of the game though, is that if they jump, they get hit. It's really good. However, another element to this is that if I turn him off jump and I just go stand, if the opponent is mashing down one, or they're trying to interrupt your pressure, that isn't armored, I have to say, you always have to worry about the threat of armor. If you're telegraphed with these cancels, right? Like if I'm doing like forward two, one cancel, or I'm doing back three cancel, forward two cancel, two, one, one cancel. Like all of these cancels are quite common for rain, I think, is that these are your main buttons for pressure. So you're constantly canceling them. The opponent might get very comfortable with those cancels and then try to enforce a button because none of them are plus. One thing you can do on block, flame burner when you expect them to release block and try and interrupt. Because if they are mashing down one, let me just set the opponent to record the reversal as block. I'm going to mash down one and block. Let's now set the opponent to uh, reversal on and have them do recording. Now, if there is a situation that I can do this from, he will mash, right? He will mash defensively. And that's something that people do all the time. Now, when you introduce the flame burner, they release block and they get hit by the flame burner. If they eat the flame burner, the pressure begins again, right? It just creates that whole new situation that if you're doing cancels, they, they mash out of. If you do flame burner just to kind of destabilize their defense, it creates a whole new game where if you throw out this flame burner and they now expect the flame burner, you're now getting more cancels and more pressure. 
So the flame burner works so well for creating an extra layer to your dash cancel game that makes them fear pressing a button. The moment they stop pressing buttons, it introduces more dash cancels, which for Sector is more interesting mix-ups. And that's something I'm gonna talk about a bit later. I have one final thing to show you with Flame Burner, and that is trade situations. So for trade situations, you can force a Flame Burner trade. Now what I mean by this is, you can purposefully let yourself get hit by the Serena knife, and create full combos in your favor. Now this is a specific example, but there are other instances too, where you deliberately let the flame burner come out and turn it into a full combo. This is way more matchup specific. Now this does work against Serena regardless because that's just how the knives work in this game. But using the flame burner specifically to trade with something and then still having enough time to combo, that's a pretty big element to Flame Burner in the right matchup. Now, it is specific, but I figured for this video, it would be kind of worth showing. If people want to know how to do it versus this in particular, you just block the first, release block, crouch the whole time, and then do Flame Burner after your button. That's going to depend on character, all the timing, but being able to do something like this with Sector helps with certain matchups quite a lot, that if you have the right timing, something that's normally kind of safe is now very much no longer safe. So that's just something I wanted to get out there, but that's all we're going to talk about on Flame Burner for now. Now I said do not be too stuck in your ways of using only up missile, but now it's time to talk about that move because it does give Rain a substantial amount outside of everything else. The first thing is bigger combos, more damage because of the ability to dash cancel on hit. So, the first few combos I want to demonstrate are corner combos that involve using an up missile at various times. First of all, something like this. That's 440 damage for one bar, one up missile. Really, really good. That works off every single launch. Now this is because the 142 does a lot of damage. It's one of the highest damage air strings in the game. But when you time an up missile behind it, you can get really good damage. Even off your meterless overhead, that's 370. Now this will work off dash cancels, of course. And that's where the high damage comes from. If you want to set up into a spell, you can. You can go into whatever else you want afterwards on Oki, and that works incredibly well for you. Other missile combos can come down from a similar path, but different openings. A high damage meterless version will be comboing into Rain God, which I wish I could say there's a trick to it. It's just hard. Doing this does great damage meterlessly, and that's without cameo. The second you introduce the missile combos, you can get a variant that looks like this. Now that's more damage, and again, it's meterless. And that would be even more damage if you did it from forward two. These combos do just require some timing, so you will just have to get used to them. But if it's damage you're after, these combos are some of the highest avenue of damage that I've found so far. But these aren't the only combos you have to go for. The missiles can give you various applications. For example, and this is something that I did not find, it was shown to me on social media. Should there be one portal on the screen and they eat forward two, you can use the missiles to extend for something like this. Let's say this is on the screen, I've used it on their knockdown. You can create these situations. There are two different paths. Again, this can work on block if you want to be a bit tricky, but... This is one. And that's higher damage than going for it on its own. An easier version would be involving the forward 3-2 for its launch. And into the same ender. Into maybe another one of these. 
you know, you can create these situations and get some really weird setups. All of that is tied to the up missile. And it's kind of the gift that keeps on giving, because if you land a confirm and you want damage, the missile can come out. If you want it for pressure, these are now going to be some of the other variants that I want to show you. We'll do it in the corner first, and then I'll show you some mid-screen. So, should you want to go for a charged back forward one, Rain still has some ways to do it. The only catch is that it is tied to the early portion of a combo. So it's not like you're doing a launch now and you'd go button, button, charge, and then they get hit by a cameo. He's not going to be doing that. He'll be doing something that looks like this. Now, it's not terrible damage, but it does create the situation. Uh, this is just one way of doing it, really. It's kind of the main way, is that you're using the up missile hit frames to combo into the whirlpool, which, when a whirlpool happens at close range, Rain does actually have enough time uh, to charge his back forward one. So using all of those combined is that when you land a confirm, call in the missile, 2-1-1 gives you extra time, and then you set up this way. And this afterwards becomes kind of whatever situation you're used to, I suppose. Maybe flame burner, go back into your cheeky pressure. It's all there for various reasons. So if you do want the whirlpool set up, you do unfortunately have to kind of cash out your combo early, which does sacrifice on damage. However, this situation is there. It can be good for damage as well. But if it is damage you're after off a forward too, you kind of want to go back into that old Rain God combo that I showed you earlier. I just wanted to demonstrate that that's how you can do it. This works mid-screen as well. So if I land a combo again, you want to do back three instead. Go for an early up missile, back three into Whirlpool, and then do the same thing. And then you can create that weird hard to block again. And that does work mid-screen to varying results, depending on if they jump or they're airborne or whatever else. But I just wanted to show that, again, it is something that you can do mid-screen if this setup is what you want. You can turn it into a full combo if you wish, but if you're going to be going for this, you may as well go for the setup, because if you're looking for a combo, you may as well just teleport, right? That's kind of what I was talking about earlier. But I wanted to show that with Sector, it does exist. However, let's talk about more up missile pressure and applications. The first thing is grab combos. Going for a knockdown, mostly involving Geyser. Call in the missile. Grab him. Oh my god, my timing, Ryan! What are we doing? Uh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Doesn't do heaps of damage, but again, because of the dash cancels, we are getting 180 for a throw, which is not bad damage. And again, half of the cameo has regenerated. This is due to missiles that the easiest way to time it is to just Geyser. And what you do is, right as Rain's second hand goes up, kind of when his hand turns blue because of the water, that's when you want to up missiles. So let's say we're going to go for a combo here. Keep it really simple. Missile now. Grab. And then, you know, there you go. You can go into a full combo. I would recommend keeping it meterless because it is going to scale like mad. But you can go for the kill if you have meter to spend, right? So all of these are really effective. And that's just one way of setting it up on block. Let's just turn the opponent off their reversal now. Because remember I talked about the threat of once they start re respecting flame burner. It, in my experience, does open up a few more cancels that they're kind of waiting for flame burner now. So they're not always ready to press buttons and interrupt. You have to enforce the respect. Once that respect is forced, well, it becomes a very different story. Because now grab combos become a threat. Right? It's all kind of whatever you want to go for, it's all there. And that's because they're now respecting. Grab combos are one element. If I turn the opponent off auto block, let's say, and this has happened in real matches, uh, I go for a combo, right? So let's just go for back three rain god. We're going to knock them down. Missile. They hold down because they just try and disrespect you. Well, I mean, you have a meaty mid that you can enforce. So there are so many different elements to the missile being used aggressively. And at any point, if you expect armor, you can just block and bait. The missile doesn't mean you have to commit. It can also sometimes incentivize an opponent to armored reversal. But that's just one element to this. If I want to go for something like overhead, let's say the opponent is on stance hold, and I'll have them duck. They're going to be blocking, right? They're blocking low. If they are respecting flame burner and they're not ready for my overhead... You can get the same situation here. 
right? Same thing. Enforce it, the pressure, the threat of missile, it's all there. And this is because you have conditioned them to fear. You've conditioned them to fear Flame Burner, which gives you a few more cancels, which opens up these really bizarre situations. If they're not ready for a cheeky overhead, overhead, whirlpool, all of that is going to start to work. And this is something that you just kind of get used to over time. Uh, it's just going for missile, going for certain things. The missile comes out. If they get hit, you can turn it into something. If you're looking to enforce respect, you can stick out like a cheeky overhead throw out your whirlpool. The missile has to come quite early for both the throw and something like overhead for it to actually connect in time. But using it in combos and pressure are all various ways to obtain really, really high damage. I want to go mid-screen and show you that these situations work just as well. You can go for 4 to one missile, overhead, whirlpool. I recommend doing the close whirlpool in these combos because the jump in timing afterwards is much tighter. However, landing the charged back forward one is easier when the opponent is close. Uh, this works the same way for your throw combos. Back three will reach. And again, if they have that much health left and you've just enforced a missile, it's going to scale like mad, but it is there. And it's something that they have to worry about. And if they want to start disrespecting you, well, that's when you flame burner. And if they eat the flame burner, they're plus. It puts you straight back into the situation to loop however you see fit. And overall, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Rain has so many options with his pressure. His pressure involving up missiles on block that are backed up by cancels that the opponent is fearing because you're doing flame burner and other things. The damage overall is actually really high, especially in the corner. That if the opponent gets opened up by any of this, let's just hit them with something. Just to remind you, right? The corner combo damage is very similar to a Janet Cage. You can go for weird pressure. That I kind of just made that up on the fly. I'm not even using those strings. But all of this is kind of backed up by all of Sector's moves. That if they respect the pressure, Flame Burner creates the situation, creates the mix-up, creates the pressure. If you're mid-screen and you want to go for certain combos, well, if you have the execution to do Rain God, decent damage, thanks to the teleport. If you land your Rain God, back three teleport, full combo, anywhere. If you're within back three distance after that hits the opponent, you can turn it into a full combo. If you want to enforce any kind of block pressure with the dash cancels, Flame Burner creates that. If you want to go for up missile combos, you can still do so. If you want to go for a mid-screen situation, well, there's still nothing stopping you from going for it and enforcing some kind of weird hard to block. And if the opponent gets caught trying to jump out of that, you can turn it into Flame Burner and force them back into the situation again. Everything that Sector is doing with Rain is perfectly in harmony with his forward one, the advancing mid, his advancing mid of back three, and his far improved dash cancels that he didn't have before. Like, that's the big one, is that these dash cancels that Rain has, he didn't have these before. These are new. So all of these weird confirms that you now want to do... You can end any of these, by the way, in Fatal Blow, which I'm going to cancel because it's YouTube. Uh, all of it works perfectly. All three of his moves. The one thing you won't use is Homing Missile because, unfortunately, I just don't think that move is relevant right now. Like, it doesn't do anything extra to make it worth the double cost and the fact that Homing Missile still has that giant delay. So, overall, hopefully you are able to learn a few things about this. If you want to end combos in Flame Burner, just do a basic juggle and then hold Flame Burner. You'll do it on landing and turn it into that. That lets you combo into Brutality, which is a personal favorite of mine. But everything you want to do with Rain involving grabs that, sadly, Sector cannot turn things into throw combos. That's the one thing he can't do here. And it's definitely the one thing he's not providing you, is throw combos. Uh, everything else, he gives you decent options because he has missile pressure he has flame burner mix-ups which are just so weird they offset the defensive play of the opponent teleport confirms that can bag really impressive damage while having impressive cameo recharge time and missile zoning that is still unchanged i mentioned right at the beginning that missiles that you sort of combine with everything else it's not amazing because it does run out eventually but this does work against a lot of characters that don't have an amazing way in so all of this stuff combined turns Sector and Rain into a ridiculously fun team. 
This video might have gone on a little bit, but there's just lots of tech to go over, and hopefully you are able to follow me until the end. If you want to give this team a go, let me know how you find it in either the comments section or social media. And overall, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to be playing this team so much more, so stay tuned for that, and I will see you next time. Have fun, and I'll see you later.